seconds away on Studio 5. It was a triplet kind of a melody, remember? Behind the scenes with one of the biggest bands in the world, we have your first look at the film Hillsong Let Hope Rise. Then, everything starts with humble beginnings. See how this theatrical worship experience really started on the heart of one man with a tiny church in Australia, oh so long ago. One of the first people to come into the church to, to be born again was a bass player, and his wife was a nightclub singer. So that was the start. It was extremely humble. Nobody said, oh, this is going to really go somewhere. <laughs> and sample that undeniable sound that now has millions singing along on any given Sunday. On the sound forever, heart and heaven together, singing holy is your name. That's what's playing in my ear in this Hillsong edition of Studio 5. And it starts now. Your love is relentless. That is the undeniable sound of Hillsong United, whose music is performed by more than 50 million people across the globe on any given Sunday. The band's spectacular rise to prominence is the focus of the new film, Hillsong, Let Hope Rise. We'll get to the movie, the music, and the message in today's Studio 5. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for your company. Let's get started with this week's rundown of what's trending in the world of uplifting entertainment. This is your top five from Studio 5. At number five. Look at you, look at you, look what you made me do. Alicia Keys is no longer doing makeup. The 15-time Grammy Award-winning singer and songwriter is making headlines after gracing magazine covers and award shows barefaced. She has faced some criticism, prompting this recent tweet from the new judge of NBC's The Voice. Me choosing to be makeup free doesn't mean I'm anti makeup. You do you. We got way too much to come Coming in at number four, a funny farewell. Good dad, can you stop your kids from licking the display case? But don't lick that. They're sorry, they, uh, kids, they get that from their mother. Come on, kids. Watch your children, sir. <laughs> What's that, sir? Uh, I didn't say anything. It was, don't sass off the nice man. Comedian Jim Gaffigan and his wife are pulling the plug on their highly successful show after just two seasons. In a statement, the comedian, who sometimes shares his faith in his storylines, noted, the time commitment to make the quality of show we wanted was taking us away from our most important project, our five children. Now to number three. There's a lot of things that need to change. Uh, one, one specifically is police brutality. San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick is facing some heat for refusing to stand for the national anthem. Kaepernick says he's protesting racial injustice and he won't stand for the anthem until he sees change in the country. There's people being murdered unjustly and not being held accountable. Cops are getting paid leave for killing people. That's not right. That's not right by anyone's standards. And at number two, actor Kirk Cameron announces a theatrical event to inspire a nation. On October 18th, Dr. Ben Carson, uh, me, Francis Chan, Dr. James McDonald, Eric Metaxas, uh, Passion and the Vertical Church Band, we're gonna be together for an exciting interactive event. There's gonna be inspiring messages, a time to pray and worship with people in your theaters this event is called Revive Us. Now to number one. I know one thing's true, I don't even really deserve to know you. Hip hop artists Lecrae and Tadashi join Christian Music's Michael W. Smith. This Labor Day weekend for Passion for America. It's the launch party for a discipleship revolution and an app called Lifeline 911. 
The purpose of the music festival's Passion for America, which will kick off on September the 4th at Sioux Falls, South Dakota, is to give away the app and ignite a discipleship revolution across the nation and around the world. And those are your top five for this week. Their songs have been translated into 60 languages and the band has sold more than 17 million albums. Those facts about Hillsong United got the attention of Michael John Warren. He's the film director behind Jay-Z's Fade to Black and Nicki Minaj's My Time Now. And Warren now brings Hillsong United Let Hope Rise to the big screen. And Studio 5 has your first look. <laughs> It was a triplet kind of a melody, remember? Do you want a line? Do you want a line? Something to start with? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bye. Mm, see the light as it come in around. What's that? I was just writing a line. And I liked it, what was it? It's something that just came to my head as I walked in the studio. Are you dead serious? Yes. That's another song. Anyway, I can tell when you, you mean. Uh, okay, I was. I'm, I'm gonna being... feel like an idiot. I feel like I said, that's a Katy Perry song. No, no, no. Don't. If that was 100% the truth. Pick a key and we'll make Okay, it. wait, 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 wait. See the light as it's coming around. I know you That's horrible. Love. I know that when they first said a movie about Hillsong United, you guys said, why make a movie about us? So now that we've got it, what do you think? <laughs> kind of the same. Is anyone going to want to watch it? <laughs> yeah. we, I mean, we, I, love, I love that the message of you know, the things that we actually care about, the thing... That, that we want to encourage people the most is actually threaded throughout the film. And, and um, I think Hillsong Let Hope Rise is, it, it, it's a film that, that has a, a message of hope. I don't know, there's this concept that we've been thinking about here, it's like everything in the world is upwardly focused. Everything in the world is like, gotta have the best of this, gotta have the best of that, gotta get the promotion, gotta make more money. But the way of Jesus or the way of God is actually downward focused. And, and we just need to serve people, we need to love people. So you go from doing films on Jay-Z and Nicki Minaj to Hillsong? Yeah. <laughs> Natural progression? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, you know, with music films, uh, the story is a little bit challenging, um, you know, because what's really at stake for a pop artist? And the answer is, you know, they're trying to stay hot, they're trying to prove they're the best rapper. I mean, there's a lot of drama there, and if, certainly with an artist like Nicki, there's just drama. Um, thank God. Uh, and for them, with Hillsong, for me, I saw a, a unique story. They're not trying to do those things. Of course they're crafting, and of course they, they want to sell albums, not just necessarily for financial gain, but their mission is to connect people to heaven. Um, and as a storyteller, I was like, that's unique. That, that, is, a, that's a, that is a new, um, I don't want to say twist because that cheapens it, but the, the, the root level of what they're after is very, very deep and very, very meaningful. And I felt had the potential to be an emotional story. Um, and we were right. Some people don't actually know how to worship God or they haven't encountered him before. So sometimes all they need is like someone just to lift their hands for them to go, oh, like maybe I should do that. And like actually lifting your hands is like a sign of surrender and it's, so I love doing it <laughs> all the time, you see me. <laughs> Taya, I guess one of the things that surprised me in the film is you arrive in Sydney with $200 and just Lord use me? Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a faith step, it was a faith step. Moved out of home, felt like it was the right time, even though, like I said, like you said, I only had $200 in the bank, but I was just trusting God with it, and um, turns out it was the, the best move I could have ever made, and it was like God's timing, and, um, he provided jobs and I feel like my relationship with him got stronger because I was like, I literally have nothing and I have you God. So like, we need to make this work. Otherwise I'll have to move back home. And it was the best experience I ever got planted in a lovely, lovely, amazing church, Hillsong Church. And then got to be part of the worship team and then eventually travel with Hillsong United. And it's been the ride of my life. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Race. This is a faith race. This is a Jesus, 
And that is your first look at the film. Hillsong Let Hope Rise begins its nationwide theater run September 16th. Still to come, here on Studio 5. This church isn't the church you started 40 years ago. <laughs> That's for sure. Hillsong's founder opens up about the worst day of his life along the road of living, loving, and leading a global ministry. You couldn't hit me with worse news. Mm. It uh, sort of hit me in layers. That's Love is War from Hillsong United. Its music and ministry is a dream come true for Brian Houston. He started the church decades ago with only a few dozen members, but it hasn't been an easy journey. Houston opened up about the ups and downs in this week's Studio 5 interview. The power of love. More than 20,000 people attend services at Hillsong Church on any given Sunday with campuses in Sydney, Kiev, Moscow, New York City, London, Cape Town, Paris, and so many more. And leading the worldwide flock is global pastor Brian Houston, who shares some of the journey in his book, Live, Love, Lead. The book's been in my heart for a long time. I uh, have been pastoring for 32 years, same church, 40 years, preaching and ministering, and I just felt like there was a lot in me I wanted to help, use to help other people, equip other people. So the timing right now just seemed to be the right time. I had the time to actually write the book. And so live, love, lead. That's where I am. Houston and his wife Bobby first started Hillsong in 1983, meeting in a school hall and then a warehouse with only 45 members. It grew to 900 people in four years and continues to multiply. This church isn't the church you started 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Now we started in a little school hall in the outer suburbs of Sydney. And those days it was like green fields where we were. And uh, we we're in a, a small hall, as I say, and it uh, is an amazing story. I mean, it's a miracle. What's been the toughest part of those 40 years for you? Well, I talk in the book about the worst day of my life. Mm -hmm. I was um, 45, it was in 1999. My father was my absolute hero. Uh, in fact, he was one of my great inspirations in terms of what I do today. And at 45, uh, one of the guys who works for me came into my office and we went through our normal list of things to talk about. And at the end, he said, there's just one more thing. And so the way he said it, the tone, I knew something was wrong, and he told me that we'd had a complaint come in that many years before that, uh, probably in the 1970s, that my father had abused uh, a young man. So, yeah, I mean, you, I, you couldn't hit me with worse news. Mm. It uh, sort of hit me in layers, mm -hmm. and so I had to confront my own father and ask him about that. So that definitely is the worst day of my life. How did that resolve itself? I can't even imagine navigating that. I don't know whether it has resolved itself as such. My father now has been uh, dead for over 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, but the ramifications of that are still, are still playing out right now. What lessons did God allow that to teach you? You know, one thing I do know is it wasn't me. I didn't do anything wrong. It was my father. and. You know, in the world we live, there's some people who would love to try and frame me by my father's sin, mm -hmm. but I, I refuse to let that happen. But I guess it helped me to realize that uh, everyone, everyone has their issues, has their battle, whatever that is. And that's why I think everyone is, is a perfect recipient for the gospel of Jesus, the grace of God. Spirit. And with more than 40 recordings to their credit, music is a Hillsong signature. Their contemporary Christian praise songs are the Sunday soundtrack for churches around the world. 
when many people think of Hillsong before they even think of the, the church and your ministry now. Um, the music is so far reaching. What do you think? I mean, are you a musician? What, 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 what do you, what, 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 why I was the church drummer mm -hmm. when I was a teenager mm -hmm. compared with the people today. No, I'm not a musician, but I always had a heart to pastor the kind of church that was an inspiration to churches. I'm a great believer in the potential of the church, uh, and I mean the local church. And so I always kind of wanted to have a church where, where we wrote and sung songs that helped the church. Mm -hmm. And so it's an amazing thing because being through various personalities over all these years, but really from the start, it seems the songs from our church struck a chord with people, firstly in Australia, obviously, and uh, then globally. And it's been a miracle story. Someone once said to me, Brian, you realise this is only a season. They're talking about the impact of the, the worship from Hillsong. And I agree, it's only a season, but so far it's been a very long season. Houston's book, Live, Love, Lead, is available online and wherever books are sold. Up next on Studio 5. And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves Getting back to the music and the signature sound. that has millions singing along. Chances are you've heard that song before. Oceans is one of Hillsong's most popular tunes. It spent a record-breaking 45 weeks at number one on Billboard's Hot Christian Songs chart. And three years after its release, it still ranks high. The artist leading that song is Taya Smith, who has been with Hillsong since 2010. And right now, her song, Touch the Sky, is what's playing in my ear. Watching lives be on the stars Those stars and hearts too vast to climb I got so hard to fall so far But I found him in his love sweat flow My heart beating, my soul Touch the Sky is one of the songs you'll hear in Let Hope Rise. The soundtrack for the film is available now. Be sure to check it out and add it to your worship rotation. And still to come on Studio 5. Honestly, just it's a ragamuffin group of ordinary people. He's not just the band leader. He's the heartbeat of the Hillsong United sound. I honestly believe that music is a, is a gift from God that was created by God 
for the very purpose of people worshipping him. And he's got a heart word for Studio 5. And welcome back to Studio 5. Before we get to the final word, let's take a look at what's in store for next week's episode. Let's go churching. Maybe you should just go. I'm not going to church alone. They'll burn me at the stake. The world of faith films continues to grow, and Studio 5 is giving you a sneak peek at a new romantic comedy in Lawfully Yours. What was it about this project that made you want to get involved? I have had a, I've been very blessed to have a wonderful career. But one of the things I find and I take great pleasure in is sharing what we do with people who want to do what we do, make movies. Studio 5 is on set as Regent University students become professional filmmakers. One could argue Hillsong United is a collective of some of the most creative worship artists in the world. But Joel Houston, a worship leader with Hillsong, would probably disagree with you. He explains why in today's final word. I believe that God, all music is God breathed. All of it, all creativity. So Beyonce's music, like God has given that gift to her. How, how people translate it or how people use it, that's up to them. But God still works through it. And I, you know, I, I, I fell in love with music, not through Christian music. I fell in love with music through, through Nirvana, you know, as an 11 year old, kind of going, what is this? So taping over my Carmen cassette, God bless Carmen, but <laughs> with Nirvana and listening to it, you know, like so I didn't get caught. And, uh, but, but, but what I learned was, you know, there's an honesty and there's something about music that connects with the deep aspects of people where they're at, you know, and, you know, the music of Nirvana way back in the day, it connected with an entire generation. And, uh, and, that's, that's amazing. Absolutely. So we, every culture on earth, every society, they've got a sound. Uh, there's a music, there's a song that goes with it. And I believe that um, the kingdom, which is the culture that we're trying to bring to earth, it should have a sound that goes with it. And there is a sound of heaven. And we're just trying to tap into even just a little bit of it. God is the only one with the power to create. That is the final word for this show. Until next time, be sure to reach out and touch me at Ephraim Graham on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as Snapchat. And then come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye.